Hello, Kathy Anderson here, psychology instructor and managing associate of supplemental instruction. Today, I wanna to reveal to you a remarkable technique for learning complex ideas and making them simple to remember. It's called the Feynman Technique, and it's been used by a surprising number of famous and successful people to resounding success. I'm about to share with you which industry titans have used the Feynman Technique to achieve success, why you should use Feynman, what it is, and then I'll invite you to give it a whirl and practice it tonight over dinner. My goal is that you will know the four simple steps of the Feynman Technique and how to use it to study a concept you're learning right now in your classes. First, let's play a game called Guess the Titan. I'm gonna show you four famous people on the next slide, and I want you to shout out the name of each person if you know it. Let's go. All right, first up, name this Titan of industry. Did you guess Bill Gates? He's the founder of Microsoft and the sixth richest man in the US. Next one, who's this? You may have had more trouble with this one. This is Warren Buffett, founder of real estate company Berkshire Hathaway and fourth richest man in the US. And voila, I'm guessing that love him or hate him, everyone knew that this is Elon Musk, co-founder of six companies and the richest man in the world. And finally, can you guess this man's name? Meet Carl Sagan, astronomer and cosmologist. He was the author and co-host of Cosmos. What do these four men have in common? They're all avid users of the Feynman technique, which no doubt contributed to their enormous success. The Feynman technique is named after the seventh greatest physicist of all time, Dr. Richard Feynman. He won the Nobel Prize, assisted on the Manhattan Project, and developed the atomic bomb during World War, move that over, World War uh, II. He contributed to the Rogers Commission, which investigated the 1986 Challenger disaster, and was a pioneer in quantum computing and nanotechnology. His success was widely attributed to his incredible ability to communicate highly complex ideas in a way that people understood. Dr. Feynman's key insight was this, that complexity and jargon often mask a lack of understanding. Complexity and jargon often mask a lack of understanding. When we simplify a concept and avoid using jargon, you know, those words that are specific to a concept or discipline that no one outside the discipline would understand, we demonstrate that we truly and deeply get the concept ourselves. You may be wondering why you should use the Feynman technique. By explaining things simply in your own words, you do three things. First, you achieve understanding of the true essence of the concept. Second, you identify gaps in your knowledge. And third, you engage in retrieval practice. Let's jump into the specifics of the technique. It's four simple steps that yield big outcomes. Step one, study the concept. Dive into your textbook to get an overview of the concept. Attend lecture and ask questions. And of course, be sure to take good notes. Take a look at my nine minute notes you will use study skills video to establish a note taking routine that by design involves summarizing main points and quizzing yourself throughout the week. Also study by making and gamifying flashcards, a proven and time efficient technique for learning facts. Be sure to check out my video called Gamify Your Flashcards as well. In step two, it starts to get good. Now's the time to explain the concept to someone else as though you were teaching it to a beginner. Explain it simply and clearly and avoid using jargon. So if you're explaining the business concept KPI or key performance indicator, you might say what I'm measuring to see if I'm succeeding. In psychology, instead of saying CBT, you might say talk therapy that changes thinking and behavior. Now, at this point, your student almost surely has questions. There were words or ideas or processes you tried to explain, but they didn't understand. And you may not have known the answers, or you may have realized there were gaps in your knowledge as you shared out. Now is the time to fill in the gaps. Go back to the source material like your textbook or lecture notes, 
and try to find the answer. If that fails, try an internet search. Now that you've checked your source material, it's time to cut the clutter, repeat the process of studying, teaching it to someone else, and filling in the gaps until you can explain the concept clearly and simply without jargon and without hesitation. Then you will know the concept. Let me share an example with you to demonstrate the Feynman technique in action. Let's take the concept of AI. Let's say that I've studied AI and I'm ready to teach it to you. So I say, in, it, at its simplest form, artificial intelligence is a field which combines computer science and robust data sets to enable problem solving. It also encompasses subfields of machine learning and deep learning, which are frequently mentioned in conjunction with artificial intelligence. These disciplines are comprised of AI algorithms, which seek to create expert systems which make predictions or classifications based on input data. Do you understand the concept of AI? Or was that clear as mud? What exactly is the problem here? If you guessed jargon, you'd be right. There are so many dense words here, it's hard for a beginner to get the gist. And remember Feynman's key insight that jargon often masks a clear understanding. What is machine learning? What is deep learning? We aren't sure from this explanation. Okay, um, I've now filled in the gaps and made the definition of AI clearer by removing jargon. Artificially intelligent systems can perform tasks commonly associated with human cognitive functions, such as interpreting speech, playing games, and identifying patterns. They learn to do so by processing massive amounts of data, looking for patterns to model in their own decision-making. In many cases, humans will supervise an AI's learning process, reinforcing good decisions and discouraging bad ones. But some AI systems are designed to learn without supervision, for instance, by playing a video game over and over until they eventually figure out the rules and how to win. Better, right? Losing the jargon helped a lot, but can we simplify? Here, I've simplified the clutter. Artificial intelligence is a machine's ability to perform the cognitive functions we usually associate with human minds. Is it clear, simple, and without jargon? I'd say yes, and I'm guessing you would too. Now you know the famous Feynman technique. Remember, if you want to learn 100 facts and definitions, gamified flashcards are probably the way to go. But if you want to learn a difficult and complex topic, something like the Intercontinental Railroad, the endocrine system, or how to solve a math problem, the Feynman technique is likely to help. Tonight, I want you to use the Feynman technique to teach a concept you are currently learning in class to the people you're having dinner with. It's more natural than you would think. My daughter regularly wants to share all the cool things she's learning in biology with her dad and me at the dinner table. When she can't remember some fact or can't answer our questions, she runs off to get her notebook and looks up the answer. If all else fails, she Googles. It's sort of like seeing the Feynman technique in its natural habitat in the wild. And what are those steps again? Study, teach, fill in the gaps, simplify, then repeat and repeat until you can do it without hesitation. Trust me, your grades will thank you, and who knows, it might even help you become the next Nobel-winning scientist or billionaire entrepreneur. You can visit the Learning Commons for more academic help, and please scan the QR code and give me some feedback on this short video on the Feynman technique. Thanks for watching. Now go recharge your study skills.